Welcome back to Sing with Cinderella. In this series, I help singers of all different skill levels reach their full singing potential. In today's episode, I'm so excited to be sharing with you how to accomplish that vocal jazz sound. Um, what differentiates jazz from other styles? All those different stylizations, those characteristics of a specific jazz vocal sound. To the lyrics, to the stylizations, to the colors, to the textures, the timbres that you can create in vocal jazz. I'll be doing some things and then I'll ask you to think about it in a certain way. Um, hopefully you can bring new light into these jazz standards that you have just picked up or you've been singing for years. Put a new fresh lens on it. If you're excited about this video, go ahead and give it a like down below. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Click the bell for notifications so you know when upcoming videos pop up. And let's talk about number one, a singer's favorite thing, a ballad. <laughs> but specifically in a jazz ballad, how the voice can truly carry the song and how you need to have a certain command. Now some will have softer sounds, and some will be more piercing. But regardless, you are commanding the song in the ballad. Uh, so we're gonna play with control here, control in volume with a mesa di voce exercise. We're gonna take the first lyric of Misty, look at me, and we're gonna play with that last note, the lyric me. So we're gonna hold this one out, the word me for four, me crescendo, take crescendo for four. And we're gonna play around with it like that and see how that can change the way that you are interpreting that lyric. So play with control, play with volume in this one. Now go ahead and pick out a little phrase in a jazz standard of your own, a jazz ballad, where you have this long held out note and we're gonna play around with it just like this last one. This time, we're actually going to start with a louder dynamic rather than a mesa di voce crescendo de crescendo. We're actually going to start out with a large dynamic and then De crescendo and see the effects. And then you can do the opposite on your own. Try and stretch. Are you going more instantaneously to a softer dynamic? Or are you really stretching it out gradually? Play around with it. Now this one's going to be more gradual. Here it is. Look at me. and kind of give a story for that long note to go on. Take it on a journey. Play around with these long notes. They're not just long stagnant notes, but really make a musical semi phrase in just that one note. Give it a storyline. Another vocal effect that we can play with is vibrato. So at the end of look at me, I added some vibrato at the end of it to give it a little more texture. Now I could sing it straight for a different effect, a more smooth effect. Look at me. And I still gave a day crescendo. Or I could have a lot of vibrato even going through, look at me. How would you say it in the beginning of the song versus the second time it's heard? Think about it that way. Another thing that we can think about is vocal effort. Along with volume, we talked about messa di voce giving crescendo de crescendo. But in terms of overall volume, I like to think that you never want to give beyond a seven. On a scale of one to 10, never beyond a seven. Even in the most expressive moment, we can express in different ways that I'll talk about in the video beyond just volume. Next, we can experiment with temperature in jazz. I like to think that some tones are cooler, some are warmer. We can also give specific colors, but let's actually just start out with coolness and brightness of a tone. So we're gonna take this on la, the same phrase, whatever phrase that you're working on, you can change it out, whatever you'd like to do. I'm gonna stick with Misty, look at me, and I'm gonna take it on la, 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 and I'm going to think an inner smile. This is going to give a brighter sound. I'll demonstrate it. Look at me. My sound is more lifted, 
towards the cheeks the sound is coming out. Think the inner smile and it's gonna change that sound. All right, this next one, we're gonna do it on away. And this is gonna give a warmer, also bright sound, but more on the warm side with the W glide. Way, way, way. Yeah? All right, next we're gonna do it on hey, hey, hey with a breathy onset using that H. Hey, hey, hey. I'm definitely the warmest on hey, 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 but it's also giving that brightness because I'm using an A vowel, which is on the brighter side than let's say an O sound. Low, low, low versus la, la, la. Lay, lay, lay. Way, way, way. Hey, hey, hey. We're gonna do ho, ho, ho. See how the vowel can even change it. We are over articulating with the vowel sounds, but think that vowel placement as you sing the regular words in the phrase. In terms of regular colors, I like to put different sections with different seasons and different colors. So when I think of more fall colors, I think of the palette amber, uh, you know, that burgundy red, orange, yellow, creams. So a certain part of the sound, let's say it's A-A-B-A, -A, maybe the first A is going to feel like autumn, and then the second A, it's similar, but it's a darker autumn, and then the B, we're shifting to spring, and I'm thinking of skies, I'm thinking of blue. So how would you sing blue differently from the way that you would sing burgundy red? So I'm gonna sing look at me, in what I feel like, and it's very individual to you. It's all about perspective. So my idea of amber might be a little bit different than your idea of amber. It's just a different way, a different lens that you're putting on um, and having a different interpretation on these phrases that have been sung by so many different people. Now I'm going to think of a brighter blue. And just like how we talked about the vowels kind of influencing the sound, now I'm gonna think of a brighter vowel as I do a bright blue, even though I'm still singing the lyrics. Look at me. As you look into the computer screen, think about that blue color. Think about yellow. Think about a dull yellow versus a yellow sunshine, like it's glittering. Look at me. And we can start to add a little bit more, not just with uh, colors, but think about articulation and uh, slides, onsets, offsets, and how those can help give you the certain colors. Let's actually dig a little bit deeper here into the onset. The onset is the way in which you approach a note. This is gonna help shape the following phrase, and also it's gonna vary up your performance between the different phrases, the different parts of your song, and having each note feel unique and interesting and have its own little sparkle. Never underestimate the power of just an onset, getting into the note, not even the actual pitch, but the way you approach it. Um, and just how variable your voice can be, all the different variations that you can give in the very powerful instrument that sits in your body. Appreciate it, own it. Um, so if I were to do Look at me. That was a smooth onset. The way in which I get into that, oh, I could do a scoop, I could do a slide, I could do a growl. So we have glottal fricatives. So if I were to start with the word hey, hey, it's me, hey, that would be a glottal fricative. Then we have the smooth, um, we have the smooth onset, look at me. Then we have a glottal onset. Our vocal folds are pressed together until a burst of air pushes through, and this happens on uh, words that start with vowels. So, I, always, always, that starts with a vowel, the A, always I see. This can be a hard glottal attack, always, always I see. And I almost got rid of it there. You wanna use these sparingly because they do uh, cause some wear and tear on your voice. Let's actually start to apply some of these concepts into a fresh set of text. So we're going with, look at me. We're gonna use the same notes, but we're gonna swap out the text. I will fly to I will fly. Why I will fly? Well, first we have I, that's a glottal. Then we have will, that is a glide, the W, will fly, I will, 
fly. So the F is a fricative consonant. And then not only that, in the word fly, we have another toy to play with. Fly, fly. It's a diphthong. So we can take different interpretations with just that one word. So we were given the same notes, right? That's our beginning canvas, right? Then we got some new paints. We're painting on with new text. And we have some different paint brushes, different tools at our disposal now with the different onsets and the different approaches and uh, different stylizations like crescendos, bends, all these different things. Maybe I want to take a turn. I will fly. See how that sounded so different then? Look at me. Very different. Okay, so let's take I will fly, and let's do a hard uh, glottal attack. I will fly. Cool, let's put it back to regular, and now let's play with the W, the, the glide here. I will, we're going to really accent the W here, and imagine that your mouth is going will, pushing out the sound. So we're gonna start from a closed spot for the W, will, and really gonna color that W, the, the word will. I will fly. See how expressive that can be if I wanted to really emphasize the word will in that phrase. Now, let's rotate and go to fly. Let's just leave alone, sing them regularly. Chef's choice here with I will, but we're just gonna play around with fly. We're going to emphasize the f of fly, the F sound, okay. I will fly. Of course, that is so overdone, but now let's take just the word fly. Let's bring back maybe to 80% of what you just did for the F of fly. Fly. And we're going to wait until the very, very end to do the E of, of the Y for fly, the, the diphthong part of it. The emphasis is going to be on the first part of fly. And then your jaw is barely going to move. It's going to be more tongue uh, action that's going to create the fly. Let's actually not move the jaw at all. Let's put our hand on the jaw and not move it at all for fly. And it's all going to be tongue in the inside of your mouth. That's going to give the final sound for the diphthong. I will fly. Now let's do the opposite and really hang on to fly. And let's give an offset, a breathy offset. Here it is. I will fly. Yeah? So just on that one phrase, how much we worked it, you can do that on all of your lyrics in your song. Now, if I were to change the text one more time, I promise just one more time for these three notes, we're going to sing love in sight. So we're going to take love in sight. The ability to elide lyrics from their onsets and offsets. Love in sight. So I just connect the V to the in. Love in sight. I'm using the V here. I wanted to use love because, well, it's a very, very common word in jazz standards, especially in music. We're always singing about love. Uh, but it's also a really fun word to sing because we have the love, love. It's gonna bring a brightness for when your tongue is touching the roof of your mouth in order to create that sound, that constant, the L. Love, the, the, the top teeth here, love in. And then we have V, a voice consonant. I love voice consonant. It's gonna help propel the next sound. So we could just do love in sight. We can elide them and use the V and use that offset of love in sight. Or we can have a completely separate love in sight. I can ignore the glottal of in, love in sight. And I thought an H, but didn't actually sing the H. And that's what's creating a really smooth onset, just like Look at me. I think the pitch before I create the sound, I'm making my mouth shape already. Love in sight. I thought about it and then I sang it. I didn't produce the sound until I was already in the place for it and that eliminated the hard glottal. Love in sight. 
In terms of enunciation and diction, jazz should feel very free and a spoken-like quality. It can be a little bit more laid back. It's still intentional. It's still, you can still highlight certain lyrics. It still has these highs and lows in the song and, and your interpretation of it. You can still bring out all of those different things without a lot of enunciation. You have a lot of options. Um, so let's actually scrap out the lyrics. Let's say you don't have them, because you might not always. There are a lot of jazz standards that you can sing, even if they don't have lyrics, a vocalist can still sing them. So let's say you have do ba do ba do ba do ba do do ba do ba do ba do ba do. So I brought out the ba in the very beginning on the way up the scale. I brought it out without lyrics, without using the enunciation of the ba necessarily. Uh, I use volume on the first one, which you don't always have to do, but it is an option. And then on the second one, I ba. I gave a little slide up to it, so I played with onsets. Um, so you have all those different options, but the key is here that it feels natural. So let's actually do a little experiment here. I like to think about something that feels very, very natural to me, something where I'm not gonna have to think about it too much, and I'm just going to say it. So for example, let's play around with this. Uh, I'll ask you, what did you eat for breakfast this morning? And then you will go ahead and give your answer. Um, I'll give my answer here. I had a piece of toast. I had some orange juice, I had two eggs, and I had a kiwi. So then I'll record that, and then I'll transcribe it on paper um, for what note values those had, the rhythm of it, but also the articulation, more importantly. What did I accent? Were there highs and lows in that? Yes, I had toast. And I had orange juice. My voice went up like that. So that's obviously emphasized. I got excited when I remembered the orange juice. Um, so you can do this with your lyrics, your song lyrics. Where is this going? Uh, play around with it, starting with something that you're very familiar with. So like, what did you eat for breakfast? Uh, how do you like to work out? Uh, do you like to go for runs? Yes, I like to go for runs, blah, 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 blah. So then you can apply this to your lyrics. For example, Lullaby of Birdland. Lullaby Birdland, that's what I always hear when you sigh. Never in my word land could there be ways to reveal in a phrase how I feel. Now you could take this to an entire new level if you're doing a rubato time. So that means it's push and pull with uh, whoever you're playing with, but also the most naturalistic way in the way that you're expressing the words. So I could stretch out, never in my word land could there be ways to reveal in a phrase how I feel. Um, but for the sake of this exercise and what we're doing for all in time styles, um, you can take the naturalistic way in which you spoke them and then highlight okay, what did I emphasize here? Or circle the words that you wanna highlight and bring those out in some way. So I can go ahead and do this exercise with Lullaby Birdland. Lullaby of Birdland, that's what I always hear when you sigh. Never in my wordland could there be ways to reveal in a phrase how I feel. So you can play around with it and play around with where you put the breaths accordingly. So while you're doing your transcription, put in breath marks. I like to use little commas that are above the notes. Um, those mean breath marks to me. Or you can put no breath and do a little dotted line connecting because that's not how you, um, that's not how you spoke the text, so then why would you want to take a breath where you're singing it? Maybe, you, of course, there are exceptions. Maybe in the way that it was written in the music, you have a, a lot of stretch notes. You're gonna have to take a breath somewhere, right? But also um, be true to the way in which you would speak them because as communicators, as singers, we want it to be the most visible and um, understandable to our audiences. And the way that we're gonna do that is to make it like it was spoken, but we're adding pitches and it has this whole entire level to be able to communicate. Last one, we have a huge component of singing jazz, and that is how we can mimic our jazz instruments with the power of just our voice. So in this exercise, I'm gonna add a little do you da, which can be done with a jazz instrument, but we're gonna do it with our voice, a little turn. Do you da. So we're gonna start from the fifth of a scale, one, two, three, four, five. A do ba do ba do ba do ba do da. 
Yeah? And then I'm adding some, some vibrato to color it. Do you da do you da? So it's basically like a little turn. Do you da? A do ba do ba do ba do ba do you da do da? A do ba do ba do ba do ba do you da da? Snap with me. A do ba do ba do ba do ba do you da and with me. A do ba do ba do ba do ba do you da. So you can take it without the turn in it. So it would sound like do ba do ba do ba do ba do you da. So I'm thinking of the letters I. O O do you do you do you if I were to slow it down do you do you and then let your voice go free don't feel like you have to tense up feel loose and move your body a do ba do ba do ba do ba do you da move your head a do ba do ba do ba and then we get really fast build up that vocal agility. You'll be able to go a do ba do ba do ba do ba do you da end up. See how I kind of switch into this higher place, a uh, more resonant space. I was channeling more of a brass sound in this. I'm gonna go all the way with that effect now. A do ba do ba do ba do ba da you da end up. It can be a little bit more percussive, perhaps. Do ba do ba do ba do ba da you da. Yeah, think trombone. A do ba do ba do ba do ba da you da. Now think saxophone. I'm gonna think. Yeah, and I changed the consonant just because I think that that one's a little more appropriate for a saxophone sound, a reed sound. Yeah, cool. All right, our next exercise we're gonna do with swing eighths, and it's gonna go a do ba do ba do ba do ba do hey ya. Yeah, so we're gonna take a breath between do ba do ba do ba do ba do breath. Hey, we're gonna use the aspirate H. Hey, so we're playing with the fricative, yes. Hey, it's gonna have a warm sound. I'm also putting in a little slide, but it's totally up to you. Maybe you wanna sing it just straight. Hey, you can add vibrato. Hey, at the very end, maybe you wanna start out straight and then add vibrato, or you wanna have vibrato the entire way through. Typically, vibrato isn't everywhere in jazz, but it's definitely used to shape and to color and to contour. So we have do ba do ba do ba do ba do hey ya. Now we're going to actually do a little vocal effect at the top. A do ba do ba do ba do ba do hey ya. So I'm gonna make my vibrato so wide to where it's basically bending the pitch into another pitch. It's almost like a trill. A do ba do ba do ba do ba do hey ya. Yeah. So keep on playing around with the things that we talked about in this video. Add scoops, slides. You can have a breath release on the hey ya. Or we can do hey ya. We can have a little fall at the end. So channel these different instruments in your practice and in your songs as you're learning them. Really learn that instrument. Learn the trombone sound. Learn uh, the brass trumpet sound. Learn a flute sound. And choose which sound is gonna be most suitable for certain songs that you're learning. Maybe it's different sections of a song. Maybe your trombone and then your trumpet for one part. And then for the end, you return with a softer, softer ending and it's a flute, a more floaty light feeling. Look at me, look at me. Play around with all these different sounds that your voice can make and just continue to play, play, play with jazz. Continue to experiment, listen, and uh, absorb all that's around you and keep on making those adjustments until you find, okay, I think this is the way I wanna sing it. Maybe you have five different versions of the way you want to sing one song. Choose for different audiences, choose for a different crowd, choose for yourself.
in your own practice. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and you learned a little thing or two about singing in the vocal jazz style. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought was most helpful and maybe what you'd like to see in future videos because I certainly would love to make those. If you have not already subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell for notifications and check out the other videos on my channel and you'll get notified every time I post a new video. If you have not already, please give this video a like and I hope to see you next time on Sing with Cinderella.